Now, here's a letter from K.R.C., who's with the Coast Guard somewhere in the North Atlantic. He didn't give his rank, but he says this. Dear Command Performance, our gang hardly believed it at first when you said right to Command Performance and the big stars will answer your request, but you're doing it. And no box tops either. And so here I am requesting Frank Morgan. We'll all be looking forward... Oh, excuse me, Pat. Uh, may I intrude? Well, if it isn't John Conti. I kind of expected you'd be popping in, John. There's a telegram here for you. Oh, thanks. I wonder who it's from. Hey, please see that Frank Morgan must be sure and go on the side. On April 23rd. Well, I'll be hanged. You will? No kidding. Well, what is it? <laughs> this wire's from the radio sponsor that Morgan and I work for, Pat. Morgan's promised to write an article for them about coffee. Coffee? How does that guy get the nerve to sell him such a bill of goods? Uh, excuse me. Is Mr. Morgan here? No, he's not here yet. I'm from the printing. We printed an article for Mr. Morgan about coffee, and I brought the proof for him to look at. Well, you better leave the stuff with me. I'll see that he gets it. Okay. Well, I still don't believe it. I don't know why you're so suspicious, John. Frank must know what he's doing. I guess so. Last week he did go to Maxwell House, and I've got the proof in my hand. You can't have proof of anything, Jockey. I never stayed at that hotel. Right. <laughs> Now, listen, fellas, I don't know what you're trying to hang on me, but I swear I got those towels for a press. Frank, we're not talking about towels. You're not? No, I got a wire about the article you promised to write. And here's the proof from the printer. Oh, uh, article, proof. Oh, yes, uh, let's see that, Cockney. Uh, Maxwell House Coffee and Authoritative Investigation. <laughs> if you'd will, you can... Oh, no. <laughs> You can't hide a pin that on me. What? He's uh, the... Gee, this is interesting. <laughs> oh, hello, Meredith Wilson. Hello. Oh, stop it. What about the article, Frank? Uh, yes. In conclusion, I would say this coffee is the finest coffee blend ever put on the market, and its flavor is enhanced by the regular grind and the drip, Frank Morgan. <laughs> Just a minute. There should be a period after that trip. Frank, tell me one thing, will you? Why would anybody come to you for an article about coffee? What? <laughs> Are you serious, Jockey? Yes, I'm serious. For generations, the Morgans have been coffee growers, starting with my grandfather, Silex Morgan. <laughs> down through my aunt filter <laughs> and settling on the grounds of my uncle Java. I'm losing my grip, fellas. <laughs> Did your ancestors just raise coffee beans? <laughs> no. My family have long been exponents of scientific agriculture, raising every conceivable kind of vegetables, and the name of Morgan is synonymous with crop. <laughs> Those Japanese beetles have been at my note. <laughs> Frank, I can't follow this. No, well, it's taking me a little time to get my bearings tonight. No. <laughs> but when you speak of the soil and the fascinating products of Mother Nature, you strike a responsive chord in my breath. Well, give him a chord, Meredith. Yes. Uh, an A flat, if you please. No! <laughs> now, you cut that out, John. Go on, Frank. Yes, I'm not going to waste any more time around here. I'm going home to my conservatory and dilly with my dahlias. <laughs> conservatory? Yes. Are you talking about that okay. window box on your back porch? I'm referring to my ten acres under glass, jockey. A gorgeous tapestry of flowers. Botanists come from miles away to tinker with my rare blooms. Toy with my delicate ferns and pinch my exotic fruits. <laughs> what do you do with all that stuff? Well, it's my sole recreation these days. <laughs> Every morning I get up early while the dew still sparkles on the grass, and in my bare feet I wander slipshod through the cowslips. And I'm glad I got He 
He's getting into it now, folks. <laughs> then on my way back, I snatch a kumquat from a low-hanging bough, pinch a magno to see if it's ripe, and, <laughs> and carefully examine my citrus crops for curly leaf. Citrus crops? Yes. A thousand trees heavy with oranges. And I can remember when I didn't have a pot to smudge in. <laughs> I'll never forget the first black orchid I tried to raise. Yes? Time and again, I failed to bring the bud to full growth on account of the depredations of the plant pest known as Limax gastropodia. Limax gastropodia? What's that? A small slug. I'll have a straight snort. No taste. Just water. Well, I'll take ginger. What are we... Please <laughs> stop that, John. Go on, Frank. Thank you, Meredith. Where was I? Fooling with some young bud. Yes. <laughs> They were pretty high school girls, and I didn't... I thought... Oh! Wait a minute. I'm going home. Oh, wait. I'm sorry, Frank. What? Did, did you ever raise the black orchid? No. Fate was against me. Really? <laughs> when I got rid of the slugs, I battled aphides. Then came a siege of pincer pants. And... <laughs> and... <laughs> Believe it or not, gentlemen, for nine long weeks, I had ants in my plants. <laughs> I finally gave up in disgust and went on to some other experiments. Oh, I know just how it feels, boy. Back in Mason City, we had some skunk cabbage on the South 40 and it drove us all... Oh, in. silence! Sure. <laughs> I was determined to produce a black flower with an attractive odor, so I engaged a young female botanist. To assist me. Uh -huh. She was quite experienced in an unsophisticated sort of a way, and we spent many happy days together in my greenhouse. <laughs> Experimenting? Of <Sure>. course. <laughs> In a garden costume as she worked on hybrids. Blue? <laughs> well, she wore shorts, but you could all blow. <laughs> you mean flowers? Yes, the flowers. certainly. Soon came the eventful day when I finally developed the black rose. I won the first prize. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, I was waiting for that. Oh, you were? You say you developed the black rose? Well, I was one of the first... I did, I did, didn't I? You did not. Oh. The black rose was developed by Father Richard. He did? Better known as the Padre of the Roses at Santa Barbara Mission. Oh, Father Barbara. Uh, well, when the blue carnation first bloomed, I was... The you one had nothing to do with it. That was Burbank. It was, uh, Burbank. Yeah. Uh, Glendale, Pomona. Well... <laughs> I, 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 Meredith. I can't think of anything, Frank. No. <laughs> you know about, uh, botany, cottony? Plantony. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess I won't bore you. No, you don't, little, Frank. Uh, we went off a lot of steam here tonight about raising flowers. Now tell us one thing you've experimented with. Now look here, my forward young bumpkin. I'm not going to oh, stand please, around, Frank, for my sake. Well, all right. Jockey, inasmuch as you're so familiar with plant raising, possibly you've heard about my experiment with a common forget-me-not and the bachelor button. No, I haven't. Oh, you haven't. Well, then I can speak freely. <laughs> I've recorded in the annals of the American Horticultural Society, you'll find a complete record of how I toiled ceaselessly to graft the bachelor's button onto the forget-me-not. Did you finally do it, Frank? I did, my boy. And what was the result? Zippers. Well, so long. <laughs>